sweethearts welcome to the session today we have figures of speech and prosody this is a topic we don't usually talk about i'm fine smriti lekha guys this is a very important topic for our exams i want to tell you about various figures of speech and meters okay so here we go there are lots of figures of speech we are talking about today first is accumulation what do you mean by accumulation good evening everybody accumulation is a figure of speech in which a list of words which embody similar qualities are used a list of words with similar qualities are piled up it includes repetition adding on more meanings it is part of an idea in rhetoric called enumeratio enumeratio oh i'm so sorry you're able are you not able to see properly eh abhi theek hai enumeratio now examples you will know want to know here i've given you examples Rangoon beans. No, this is from James Joyce's Ulysses. Rangoon beans, strikes of tomatoes, drums of figs, drills of sweets, spherical potatoes, tallies of like this. So many things added, 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 added. This is accumulation. Did you understand, everybody? Accumulation means many things added, similar things added in one long list. Look at this I have given an example from Shakespeare Then shall our names fam familiar in his mouth as household words what are the names Henry the 5th in Henry the 5th he is telling names one after the other Harry the king Bedford and Exeter Warwick and Talbot Salisbury and Gloucester list of names this is accumulation getting me everybody accumulation or enumeration in rhetoric then another example i have given your organization winston churchill said this okay or can you see properly winston churchill said this your organization your vigilance your devotion to duty your zeal for the cause must be raised to the highest intensity that is winston churchill Winston Churchill. Okay, <clears throat> I am not reading out everything in the slide because I just want you to understand there are so many examples, so many examples for enumeration or accumulation. Now the second one is. a junction what is a junction a phrase or clause is added to a sentence at the beginning or end fades physical beauty with disease or age high the bird flew adjunct means adding high the bird flew fades physical beauty a phrase or clause added you know now adjunct the word meaning itself is clear it is adding i am just introducing all these ideas to you all these figures of speech to you you should take down the names or do your own research based on this then you will have amazing knowledge at nomination means it's a kind of repetition 
there are several kinds of repetition. Okay, I'll do that, Dhirendra. At nomination means repetition of a root word with a change in letter or sound. A repetition of a root word. No, 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 repeated. See? He is nobody from nowhere and he knows nothing. At nomination is repetition of a root word. News is what somebody somewhere wants to suppress. Some, some is repeated. At nomination is a kind of repetition. Thank you guys. Welcome to the session. Alliteration, all of you know. Alliteration is a stylistic device in which consonant sounds are repeated. Consonant sounds are repeated. Alliteration creates a musical effect. That is why alliteration is used. It creates a musical effect. Good examples I have here from Samuel Taylor Coleridge's Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. The fair a fair breeze blew, the white form flew, the furrow followed free. Burr sound repeated, fur sound repeated, henna. Repetition of consonant sounds. Repetition of consonant sounds is called alliteration. Alliteration is repetition of consonant sounds. Again, from James Joyce's dead, his soul swooned and slowly he heard the snow. See, sir sound is repeated. Sir, sir sound is repeated. That is alliteration. Welcome to this session, everybody. Alliteration means repetition of consonant sound. Guys, will you please like the video, guys? Now, I have given examples from Romeo and Juliet. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes. Again, first sound is again repeated. First sound is again repeated. Now, anaphora. Dhirendra, you can WhatsApp me in the regular number. I will check it. Anaphora. That is another kind of repetition. Anaphora is another kind of repetition or Dhirendra we will contact you okay no problem we'll contact you anaphora is another kind of repetition remember there are many kinds of repetition repetition itself is a whole area within figures of speech the deliberate repetition of the first part of a sentence is called anaphora the initial part of a sentence is repeated did you understand Example, dekho ge, to samaj ge. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. So, it was the, it was the, repeated. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. See, anaphora, repetition of the initial part of a sentence. Are you getting me, guys? Remember, Tintin Abbey begins like this. Five years have passed. Five summers with the length of five long winters. Five years have passed. I'm fine, guys. Welcome to this session. Thank you for joining us. This is an amazing session where I'm introducing a lot of figures of speech and meters so that you can read on your own, become great scholars. Will you do that? So, we are talking about anaphora. Anaphora is a kind of repetition where the initial part of a sentence is again, again, again repeated. Oh my God, Naila. Sorry, Naila. What did you read? Hello. Thank you. I love you too, Naila. Thank you. Now, another example of anaphora. What the hammer? What the chain? See? What the, what the... Today, if we say what the, it means something else. <laughs> so, this blessed plot, this, this, this is repeated here. In Richard III, see, this, this, this is repeated here. No promise, Dhirendra, we will contact you. Sorry, Dhirendra, we will contact you. 
So many examples are there. Tadadang, anaphora. Are, 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 dekho. Antana classes. Antana classes. What do you mean by that? Oh my God, this is also repetition. This is another kind of repetition. Antana classes. A re repeating a word or phrase, but with a different meaning than in the first case. You know, repeating a word or phrase with a different meaning. That is called antenna classes. Repeating a word, same word, but different meaning. Did you understand? Antenna classes can create irony and pun. Antenna classes can create irony and pun. If you cannot see, will you please uh, increase your resolution, guys? Please increase your resolution. I can't do anything from my end. Otherwise, an academy will have to do something. Repetition of a word in a different way. Your argument is sound. Nothing but sound. <laughs> sound, the word is repeated. Your argument is sound. Here it means solid. Nothing but sound. Here it means hollow. Nothing is there. The word sound is repeated in two different ways. And there is bars on the corners and bars on the heart. One bar means bar, this bar. Bars on the heart means this. Did you understand? These are funny examples. Guys, are you loving this session? Dekho. The woods are lovely, dark and deep. But I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. And miles to go before I sleep. This repetition creates an effect of death. First meaning sleep only. This sleep. Second sleep is death. Antenna classes. Okay. Then antiphrasis. A word or phrase is used in a sense contrary to its conventional meaning. You know antiphrasis means a word or phrase is used in opposition to its usual phrase. In opposition to its usual phrase. No, I made this newly, Dhirendra. This is, I made this newly. Examples they go. Opposition. Was he free? Was he happy? So, in unknown citizen, Auden is asking, was he free? Was he happy? What does that mean? It means he was not free. He was not happy. Teacher will ask you, are you studying? That means you are not studying. So, antiphrasis creates what? Irony. Antiphrasis creates irony. Get in little man, he told his fat old friend. Here little does not mean little, it means big. Get in little man. It means big only. Now, I am not reading every example. I am just giving you an outline so that you can carry on this discussion and this, you know, kind of exploration on your own. Assonance. What is assonance? Assonance takes place when two or more words close to one another repeat the same level, same vowel. Two words are close to one another and the same vowel is repeated. This is assonance. Assonance. Look at this. We light a fire. Light a fire. I sound, I vowel sound is repeated. I feel depressed and restless. A sound is repeated. Look at this. Repetition of assonance means repetition of vowel sounds. Hey na? These are vowel sounds that are repeated. He gives his harness bells a shake. Gives E sound. Gives his two E sounds repeated. Harness bells A sound is repeated. He gives his harness bells. So repetition of vowel sounds. I have marked here. I have marked it here. Then, poetry is old, ancient, goes back far. O sound. 
poetry is old ancient goes back far o sound is also vowel sound are there is no book dhirendra this is not from a book i made this powerpoint na i made this powerpoint it is going to be a book of course do not go gentle into that good night o o sound again do not go gentle into that good night o o rage rage against the dying of the light grave man see a a sound is repeated this is also assonance abhi dekho cataphora another important concept is cataphora cataphora is a literary device a figure of speech a literary device in which a pronoun used initially in a sentence refers to what is used afterwards if you say he at the beginning that he will refer to something that comes later i will explain with the example then you will understand a pronoun used initially in a sentence refers to an expression or subject that is used afterward you will understand after he had received orders the soldier left the barracks first we are saying he then only we are saying the soldier did you understand everybody first we say he then we say soldier that <coughs> that is cataphora first we say the pronoun then only we say the noun why the i know it is important for tgd pgd that is why i am teaching this once it landed safely the helicopter opened its doors it and helicopter it first pronoun is said then helicopter the noun is coming that is cataphora did you understand anaphora cataphora both you understood then chiasmus chiasmus you should watch this video carefully write down everything chiasmus what is chiasmus a figure of speech in which words grammatical constructions or concepts are repeated in reverse order when i give you example you will understand a figure of speech in which words grammatical constructions concepts etc are repeated in reverse order for example look at the easy example his time a moment and a point his space his time a moment listen to this once again words are repeated in reverse order then his time a moment his space a point it should be but instead of that his time a moment a point his space did you understand his time a moment say similarly it should be his space a point but instead of that we are saying in alexander pope's essay on man his time a moment a point his space did you understand so once more listen to this if you didn't understand chiasmus word order is inverted word order is inverted his brother a teacher a uh, a doctor mine for example i am cooking up an example for chiasmus his brother a teacher my brother a doctor that is the order normal order but when you use chiasmus his brother a teacher a doctor mine clear of course rhetoric prosody figures of speech is important for every single exam they can ask in any exam pro figures of speech and prosody it is important you are you are acting as if you have not even done your ba and ma every exam needs it this is the basic thing in english literature na now other examples i have given other examples okay dhirendra i will think i will do that love as if you would one day hate and hate as if you would one day love that is also chiasmus love 
as if you would one day hate. Hate as if you would one day love. These are chiasmas. Now, antonomasia. Antonomasia is the substitution. This is very easy. Shakespeare was our Homer. Dryden said, na, Shakespeare was the Homer or father of our dramatic poets. That is antonomasia. Substitution of an epithet. No, that is not antonomasia. This is epithet. Epithet means instead of Joan of Arc, you say, made of Orleans. Instead of Shakespeare, you say, bard of Avon. The bard of Avon wrote all his major plays in Jacobian period. If you say that, that is antonomasia. Substitution of an epithet or title for a proper name. Now, what I said is correct. Shakespeare was the home and is also antonomasia. Use of a proper name to express a general idea. Instead of great poet, you use the word Homer. Instead of miser, you use the word Scrooge. It is antonomasia. Climax is a figure of speech in which words, phrases or clauses are arranged in the order of increasing importance. Least important, more important, more important, more important, climax. Did you understand? Figure of speech where words, phrases or clauses are arranged in order of increasing importance. It helps to render balance and brevity to speech or writing. To speech or writing, there is balance or brevity added. Balance or brevity. That comes from climax. For example, beauty is but a vain and doubtful good. More and more increasing important things he is going to say. Shakespeare in The Passionate Pilgrim. Beauty is a vain and doubtful good. A shining gloss that vadeth suddenly. A flower that dies when first it gins to bud. A brittle gloss that's broken presently. A doubtful good. A gloss, a gloss, a flower. Climax. Did you understand? Climax means slowly, slowly, slowly. You are increasing, increasing. Climax. All of us know that. Okay. Now, from Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men, as well as white men, would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Climax. <laughs> Did you understand? Slowly increasing and reaching a peak, high point. That is climax. Anticlimax is also there. There is also anticlimax. Hello, Dhirendra's mother. Anticlimax is a figure of speech in which statements gradually descend in the order of importance. Climax is ascending. Anticlimax is descending. Arrangement of a series of words, phrases or clauses in the order of decreasing importance. That is anticlimax. She's a great writer, a mother and a good humorist. He lost his family, his car and his cell phone. <laughs> if you put it a little tight, it becomes climax. He lost his cell phone, his car and his family. You understand guys? I am enjoying this. This is so funny. I know that every single point, it is not easy to get. You have to watch the video again. You have to take down everything. Take some effort to study. I am giving you a very good road map. I am giving you so many terms and brief discussions. Take down all this. Study. Very important. So many exams have a couple of questions from... Um, this area. Did you understand? Now, dysphemism. I know most of you know euphemism. Euphemism means what? Instead of a harsh word, you say a soft word, a kind word. You know, a less offensive word. Dysphemism is the opposite. Euphemism means instead of the saying a harsh no 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 akanksha euphuism is lilies euphuism is lilies 
that is very complicated style of writing. I am talking about euphemism. That is different. Euphemism means instead of using a harsh word, instead of saying he died, you say he passed, he went. And, uh, we say he went instead of saying he died. Died is a harsh word. Went is a mild word. Henna. Yes, Akanksha. Wonderful. I know people are often confuse. Euphemism means instead of a harsh word, you say <laughs> a kind word, a less harsh word. Opposite is dysphemism. Use of a harsh or offensive word instead of a less offensive word. Did you understand? Look at this now. Types of dysphemism. So many examples I've given. Uh, to say that she is not that, she is not that uh, great, you say she is a half wit. Somebody may not be a fool. He is a fool, you say. Somebody may not be a fool. He just made a mistake. But you will say, he is a fool. That is dysphemism. Did you understand? You call people dog, pig, all these words. That is dysphemism. Any form of verbal abuse can be dysphemism. Did you understand? Calling a negro nigger is dysphemism. Did you understand? Suppose you usually call me Kalyani ma'am, but you get angry with me and you say, Kalyani, you are not right. You should not have done this, you tell me. When you say, instead of usually, usually you call me Kalyani ma'am, but when you get angry, when you say my name, without ma'am, that is dysphemism. Did you understand guys? <gasps> Portrait of the artist as a young man, may they go? Bohut bura hala yaha. Sons of bitches cried Dr. Daedalus. When he was down, they turned on him to betray him and rend him like rats in a sewer. Oh, 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 oh. So much dysphemism here. <laughs> Did you understand? Ha! Oh my God, Othello is calling Desdemona's trumpet out, trumpet. Weepest thou for him to my face. Down strumpet. Oh my God. That is dysphemism. Ayyo. Poor Desdemona. Now let me ask you. Do you know what is ellipsis guys? What is ellipsis? When you say something. You deliberately omit a word. Or a series of words. That is called ellipsis. You deliberately omit one word or a series of words. That is called ellipsis. Ellipsis is usually represented by three dots. It can be placed at the beginning, middle or end. So now when we quote poetry, when we make a quote, sometimes in research dissertations, etc., research papers, etc., we put ellipsis, henna, ellipsis. Thank you, Krishna. Look at this. Did he peacefully? That means, did he die peacefully? Instead of saying die, instead of saying die, he says, did he peacefully? Dhirendra, there are many important literary terms books. Cadence book, Chris Baldick's book, very important. Okay? Very useful. Ellipses you understood. Then epigram. What do you mean by epigram, Bolo? Epigram means like a proverb, a concise, witty, memorable statement. A very short, witty, memorable statement. Sometimes using humor, showing wisdom. This is epigram. Epigram. Examples they go. Women are a decorative sex. 
They never have anything to say, but they say it charmingly. <laughs> Oscar Wilde said that. There is no such thing as a moral or an immoral book. Books are well written or badly written. That is all. So many epigrams are there in Oscar Wilde. Like a proverb. I can resist everything but temptation, said Oscar Wilde. <laughs> That's a joke. Underwoods is a poem by Robert Louis Stevenson. They'll ask in net. Underwoods, famous poetry collection by Robert Louis Stevenson. Examples of epigram you will get from Underwood. Am I boring you guys? Is this boring? If you want to study, this is not boring. If you just want shortcuts, then this is boring. Have you heard of this, A Man Set to the Universe by Stephen Crane? Wow. They are also epigram. Sir, I exist, a man said to the universe. Sir, I exist. However, reply the universe, the fact has not created in me a sense of obligation. <laughs> the universe is saying, if you exist, that doesn't mean I should take care of you. Take care of yourself. Human beings do not feel so important. Treat the universe properly. That is what is important. Yes, Ruchi Kumari. Child is the father of man. That is right. Child is the father of man. Oh, wonderful. Note down, note down everything. Epiphora or epistrophe is a counterpart of anaphora. Anaphora, a group of words are repeated at the beginning. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Remember? Five years have passed. Five years, the length of five long winters. Anaphora, repetition of word or words at the beginning. Epiphora is at the end. Repetition of word or words at the end. Both anaphora and epiphora give emphasis. Emphasis. Look at this. Sweet Portia, if you did know to whom I gave the ring, if you did know for whom I gave the ring, if and would conceive for what I gave the ring, and how unwillingly I left the ring, when not would be accepted but the ring. The ring, the ring, the ring, the ring. See the repetition? Haha, <laughs> wonderful. Thank you, Latika. Wow, Shakespeare, you know every single figure of speech. Which book did Shakespeare study? We should study that book because Shakespeare knows every figure of speech. Haha, <laughs> look at this again from Shakespeare. Fie, fie, thou shamest. Thy shape, thy love, thy wit. You know, this is re repeated here again. Look at Samuel Beckett in Unnameable. Where now? Who now? When now? Paul me. This is actually the draft of a book, Paul me. Will you please watch the video again, Paul me? If you watch the video, it will immensely help you, Paul me. Will you do that, Paul me? Euphemism. Wonderful. Euphemism, I told you it is the opposite of dysphemism. Euphemism is a polite expression used in place of words or phrases. Instead of offensive, euphemism, instead of offensive words, you use less offensive words. Such as, you say instead of he died, you say he went. You are becoming a little thin on top. Ayyo, everybody says that to me. You are becoming a little thin on top. Means someone is going bald. Guys, please don't tell me, ma'am, you are going bald. Instead of that, use euphemism, guys. Instead of that, say, ma'am, you are becoming a little thin on top. 
and then I will say it doesn't matter what matters is not what is on top but what is inside <laughs> you should also say that to everybody yes uh, thank you Krishna our teacher is in the family way that means our teacher is pregnant our teacher is in the family way Euphemism. <laughs> Squealer says in animal farm. For the time being, it has been found necessary to make a readjustment of rations. That means you are not getting any more food. <laughs> All the food is going to be eaten by pigs. That is the meaning. For the time being, it is found necessary to make a readjustment of rations. Thank you everybody. Ruchi Kumari and Paulami, will you please watch the video again? Every single PDF I can't give in YouTube, you know why? Because this is going to be a book soon. My team will kill me if I give this. So many people worked hard to make this. I don't think I may allow to give my number in YouTube, uh, an academy YouTube, sorry. Example, flee. In order to persuade his beloved to sleep with him, the speaker says, a flea has bitten you, a flea has bitten me. Our blood got mixed in the flea. The flea is our marriage altar. The whole poem is a euphemism. Did you understand, guys? Hyperbole. Hyperbole is an extreme exaggeration used to make a point. Hyperbole is an extreme exaggeration. It is like the opposite of understatement. What are the examples? Are you loving this, guys? Did you like the video? See what Joseph Conrad is saying in Heart of Darkness. I had to wait in the station for 10 days. And then he's saying, an eternity. That means 10 days is an eternity. Eternity, he did not wait. That is exaggeration. I am saying, guys, will you please watch the video again? Instead of asking for PDF. You know why? We worked the whole eternity to make this PDF. To make this PPT. We worked for eternity. We worked. Thousands of people worked. It, it's hyperbole. Only 10 people worked. Not thousands. Eternity to nahi hai. Only 5 days we worked. <laughs> Did you understand? <laughs> Guys, I have told you a million times. You have to read on your own. Million times is exaggeration. It is hyperbole. Did you understand? Look at what WH Arden is saying. Liar. I will love you dear. I will love you till China and Africa meet. And the river jumps over the mountain. And salmon sing in the street. I will love you till the ocean is folded and hung up to dry. Aisa kabhi hota hai kya? It is hyperbole. Did you understand? Oh, yo, so many examples of hyperbole. Nahi padungi, ye sab. Bohot hai. Hypophora. Hypophora is a figure of speech in which the speaker asks a question and answers it. Like I do in 10 p.m. live. Guys, do you know the answer to this question? Who wrote Don Yuan? It is. Lord Byron, I myself answer, that is hyperphora. I ask a question and I answer it. That is a figure of speech called hyperphora. Are you enjoying this? I hope I am not boring you. Hyperphora is similar to a rhetorical question. But in a rhetorical question, there is no answer. <laughs> Correct, Krishna. Why candles, objected Daisy, frowning. She snapped them out with her fingers. In two weeks, it will be the longest day in the year. Do you always watch for the longest day of the year and then miss it? I always watch for the longest day in the year and then miss it. She is replying. 
She is asking the question, replying. This creates a rhetorical effect. The what is the ma what is the matter is not the answer. Did you understand, guys? Hyperfora. In Anton Chekhov's Cherry Orchard, same principle is followed. And then irony. Irony is a figure of speech in which words are used in such a way that their intended meaning is different from the actual meaning. The intended meaning is completely different from the actual meaning. That is irony. Do you want to see the example, guys? Mark Antony says, Look at friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. Brutus says that Julius Caesar was ambitious. You offered Julius Caesar the crown thrice in the capital and he refused it. Julius Caesar never amassed wealth. He worked for the people. But Brutus says he was ambitious and Brutus is an honorable man. Every time he repeats this, he keeps on repeating this line. Every time he repeats this, we understand the opposite meaning. We understand that Brutus is not an opposite, not an honorable man. By praising, ironically, Antony is condemning Brutus. Water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink means there is water everywhere, ironically. There is no water to drink. Did you understand everybody? I hope Anjali is listening to this. Of course they will ask all these questions in gate. Litote. What is litote? Litote is a figure of speech in which a negative statement is used to affirm a positive sentiment. What you say is negative but what you mean is something positive. Litote is like understatement. Litote is like understatement. Example you will understand. From the example you will understand. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. From what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if I had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. <laughs> ice would suffice. Those who have desire will know fire will destroy you. Those who have experienced hate will know hate is like ice. Ice will also destroy you. Fire and ice. Here, ice would suffice is an understatement. Are you able to follow everybody? I am not unaware. I am not unaware. That means I am aware. That is, I am not innocent. Means I am guilty. That is, litot. Oxymoron kya hota hai? Rhetorical questions are, all these are, it is not called a rhetorical question, Ruchi Kumari. There are different kinds of figures of speech. Rhetorical figures of speech are there. A category of figures of speech are called rhetorical figures of speech. Did you understand? These all come under the broad area called rhetoric. Some come under linguistic terms. I mean linguistic uh, changes. Some, for example, alliteration and assonance. They are not rhetorical figures of speech. Oxymoron is a figure of speech in which two opposite ideas are joined to create an effect. Two opposites are joined to create a dramatic effect. What is oxymoron? Give me, I'll give you examples. Controlled chaos. Kill with kindness. Old news. Small giant. Opposites. Yes, old news, open secret, correct, correct. These are opposites that combine to create a new effect. 
I must be cruel only to be kind. All animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. That is oxymoron. Now, personification. A figure of speech in which a thing, an idea or an animal is given human attributes. Personification means a thing, an idea or an animal is given human attributes. All of you know Alexander Pope used personification. Two sunflowers move in the yellow room. Ah, eh? oh, William, we are weary of weather. Weary of weather, said the sunflowers. Shining with dew, their sunflowers are personified. Titania is speaking. No night is now with him or Carol the blessed. Therefore the moon, the governess of floods, pale in her anger. Moon is personified as angry. Moon is personified as angry. Did you understand? My alarm yells at me every morning. Yes, your alarm is personified. What is pun? Pun is word play involving multiple meanings of words or similar sounding words. In literature, pun can be used to clarify meaning. It is the unkindest tie tied sorry it is the unkind of unkindest tie that ever any man tied i think there is something wrong there sorry for the mistake so done in a hymn to god the father gives example when thou hast done thou hast not done for i have more here done is punning on his own name D-O-N-E done means D-O-N-N-E -N -N -E done. The poet is punning on his own name. Did you understand? On the contrary, Aunt Augusta, I have now realized for the first time in my life the vital importance of being earnest. There, he is punning on the name E-R-N-E-S-T and the word E-A-R-N-E-S-T. Got it? Merrisome, have you heard? What is merrisome? A figure of speech by which something is referred to by a conventional phrase that enumerates several of its constituents or traits. Example, search every nook and cranny. Nook and cranny is a conventional phrase. But it is describing what it is saying. Every part, every small part is searched. High and low means to look for something everywhere. But it is physically describing young and old. Describing all the population. Metonymy and synecdoche are very easy. Listen to me. I will explain metonymy and synecdoche first. Metonymy is a kind of metaphor. Metonymy is not completely different from metaphor. It is related only. Metaphor is when two unrelated words are used. Instead of one word, you use an unrelated word. Metonymy is when instead of one word, you use a related word. Synecdoche is a kind of metonymy. Synecdoche is when the related word is a part standing for whole or a whole standing for part. Metonymy is when a related word is used. Instead of king, you say crown. Henna. Instead of um, author, you say pen. Instead of doctor, you can say stethoscope. Instead of car, you say wheels. All this is metonymy. But whenever part stands for whole and whole stands for part, that is synecdoche. Synecdoche is a kind of metonymy. Clear? Now, metalepsis. 
a figure of speech in which one thing is referred to another that is only slightly related to it. Seemingly unrelated. Not so much relation is there. For example, um, as he hung, as he swung toward them, holding up the hand, half in appeal, but half as if to keep the life from spilling. Here spilling means spilling of blood. He makes a connection between blood and life. But it is not a very deep connection. Did you understand? But now my oat proceeds. Oat refers to the, the material from which the flute is made. Oat and flute are slightly related. So it is metalepsis. Was this the phase that launched a thousand ships and burned the topless towers of helium? You know, it is not a phase that launches. It is actually a synecdoche. Instead of woman, you say face. But it is also metalepsis. You can say it is metalepsis as well as synecdoche. Did you understand? Metaphor. A figure of speech which makes an implicit, implied or hidden comparison between two things that are unrelated. A figure of speech that makes an implicit, implied or hidden comparison between two unrelated things. Unrelated, very important. Specialized kinds of metaphors are allegory, catacrisis, parable, pun. They are all different kinds of metaphor. She is all states and I and all princess I. This is from dance, the sun rising. She is all countries and I am all the princess. She is all the nations and I am all the rulers. <laughs> Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? That summer's day is an extended metaphor. Metonymy is a figure of speech that places replaces the name of a thing with the name of something to which it is closely related. Suno Sarva Sarvat Samarin Metonymy is often confused with another figure of speech called Synecdoche. They are not the same. Synecdoche refers to a thing by the name of one of its parts. Like you were saying Akanksha, calling a car wheels is synecdoche. Crown for king is metonymy. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. It is metonymy. These people are not lending him the ears. Lend me your ears. Ear is related to attention. Did you understand? That is metonymy. Simile is a figure of speech where a comparison is made showing similarities between two different things and you have to use the word like, as, etc. Oh, my love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. My love is like a melody that's sweetly played in tune. My love is like a red, red rose. Like, simile, I wandered lonely as a cloud. I wandered lonely as a cloud, as. Simile, like a cloud, as a cloud. Synecdoche, I can't sing anymore, Agansha, because of continuous teaching. My voice has completely changed. <laughs> Not that I was a great singer, but. Hello, Deepak. Synecdoche, literary device, where part stands for whole, whole stands for part. The western wave was all aflame, the day was well, was nigh done. Western wave, he is saying, it is part of the ocean. The ocean was all aflame, that is the meaning. Clear? Big, big examples. 
Thank you. Tautology. Our Dryden attacks Shadwell for tautology. Shadwell, please don't write drama. Stop writing drama and poetry, Shadwell. Write pattern, poems, tautology, such stupid things you write. Tautology is repetitive use of phrases. Same thing unnecessarily repeated. Due to inadequacies in language, there can be tautology. Unintentional ambiguities, there can be tautology. Don't worry about that. We'll see examples. Your acting is completely devoid of emotion. Why completely devoid? That is tautology, unnecessary repetition. Completely and devoid. It is completely empty, don't say. That is tautology. Empty means empty. There is nothing there. To Carthage, then I came burning, 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 burning. See? Repetition. Tautology deliberately used to highlight the meaninglessness of something. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. Not with a bang, but with a whimper. Hollow men are singing in hollow men, T.S. Eliot's. Transferred epithet. A figure of speech when an epithet that qualifies one noun is used for another noun. Also known as hyperledge. Hyperledge. A transferred epithet. Usually, people are sleepless, but you say sleepless night. Usually, people who get money are cheerful, but you say cheerful money. Did you understand? In David Copperfield. Peggotty rubs everything that can be rubbed. Until it shines like her own honest forehead with perpetual friction. <laughs> Example of transferred epithet. The whole sentence is the transferred epithet. Peggotty is rubbing everything until it becomes like her forehead it seems. Now. Understatement. Understatement is a figure of speech used by writers to make a situation seem deliberately less important or serious. Actually, the situation will be very serious. But in understatement, the situation is deliberately made to look less important. Good gracious! Anybody hurt? No, ma'am. Killed a nigger. <gasps> Kill the nigger, that is not unimportant. Look at catcher in the right. I have to have this operation. It isn't, it isn't very serious. I have this tiny little tumor on the brain. <laughs> it isn't very serious, it seems. Understatement. Zyugma. We have finally reached Z. A figure of speech in which a word, usually a verb or an adjective, applies to more than one noun. Shut the door and your mouth. Ha <laughs> ziugma. Shut the door and your mouth. I know, Priyanka. I feel like that. Tired chair. My chair is tired, uh, Priyanka. Transferred epithet. You are right. Ziugma means... Shut the door and your mouth. Shut is applied to both. <laughs> laugh. You people don't laugh. Best example. They covered themselves with dust and glory. <laughs> they covered themselves with dust and glory. Yes, Agangsha. He broke my phone and my heart. Correct. <laughs> he broke my phone and my heart. Very good. Meters in English. Are you ready for meters? Ta-da-dang. 
Guys, will you please like the video? I think nobody liked the video. You people liked, na? That is why you are watching. <laughs> but people are not attending. They are leaving the video, the session also. Why is it so boring? Now, thank you. What is meter? It is the rhythm of the poem. Baba, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Why can I sing this poem? Why am I able to sing this poem? Tell me why. Because there is rhythm. Rhythm is got from meter. Did you understand? <laughs> <laughs> People ask me, if NTS stops net, what will you do? I will say, I will immediately start a primary school. <laughs> because I'm, I am learning to do it, primary school teaching. Meter, you understood, it's the rhythm. The rhythm is created mainly by the artistic and judicious use of accented and unaccented syllables. What is syllable? The smallest meaningful unit of a word. That's right. Rujukumari is sitting and writing transferred epithets. Correct. We are way. Threat. One syllable. Threaten. Two syllables. Threatening. Three syllables. Threateningly. Four syllables. <laughs> Did you understand? Threat. Threaten. Threatening. Threateningly. What is a foot? You can't see. Yo. A foot is a single unit in a line of poetry. Comprises stressed and unstressed syllables. Stressed and unstressed syllables. Dheerendra, you keep quiet. You will get me thrown out from academy if you do these things. Latika, we will start play school also. Latika, don't worry. English poetry is accentual syllabic. Based on how accented and unaccented syllables are combined, the foot can be an iamb, a trochee, a spondy, a dactyl, an anapest, and ferric. Did you understand, guys? These are the different types of meter. Look at this, guys. I am means two syllables. Didum. Didum means unstressed followed by stressed. Trocky means dum di. Dum di means stressed followed by unstressed. Dactylic means dum di di. Dum di di. Stress, unstressed, unstressed. Anapest means di di dum. Di di dum. Spondy means dum dum. Firic means dee dee. <laughs> Did you get that? Did you get that, everybody? I am bis provide, unite. Troke is garden, highway. Dactylic is poetry, poetry, basketball. Anapestis, underfoot, overcome. <laughs> Spondy is heart strings, father's fourth. Firic is, is to with the, my way is to begin with the beginning. <laughs> Did you understand? How to know stressed syllables? Stressed syllables are longer, like computer. Computer. It's louder. Computer. It has a change in pitch. Computer. Computer, you have to say. It is said more clearly. Computer. Com. It is not clear. Pew. It is clear. It uses larger facial movements. Computer. Computer. <laughs> Did you understand? 
Are you able to understand? These are all easy ways to remember. It is longer. Computer. Com. Simple. S short. Pewter. It's louder. Pewter. It has a change in pitch. It is said more clearly. It uses larger facial movements. Computer. <laughs> Did you get that? I'm so sorry for teaching you like this. You will say, what an idiot she is. She thinks we are school children. I hate her class. She doesn't have any standard. She doesn't teach like a university professor. Are Baba, bohot sare university professors ne aap logo padhaye na. Phir bhi aap yaha kyu hai? Because you need a teacher like me na. That is why. I am confident. My teaching style will help you. All this will really help you understand. You will be really motivated to study. You will pass exams. You will become professors and vice chancellors. I know it. I am the stress disable. Okay. Me. I am the stress disable. <laughs> Did you understand? How are meters named? Are, are, I am big pentameter. Matlab kya hai? Penta means five feet are there. Each foot is I am. Dactylic hexameter kya hai? Hexa means six. Six feet are there. Each is a dactyl. Trochaic tetrameter kya hai? Tetra means four. Four feet are there. Each is a trochee. Samaj reho. Penta. If music be the full, the love play on. Give me excess of it that's a feeding. Look at the rhythm. The appetite may sicken and so die. All this is iambic pentameter. Even when I am scolding the Hindi speakers, you want it in English, Nilagandan, you better not hear it. Trochaic tetrameter, they go. Through the forest have I gone. But at and found I none. On whose eyes I might approve. The, the, on whose eyes I might approve. There's a small variation there. Got it, guys. From next time, you should read like this, then you'll understand. Anapestic meter. Just the place for a snark, the bellman cried. You know, the tala or the tune changes with the meter. Half a league, half a league, half a league onward, all in the valley of death. Something like that will be the tune, I don't know. <laughs> I cooked it up. <laughs> because it is dactylic diameter. Dactylic hexameter means long line. Of course the words are split. Otherwise we can't get meter. One word can come in two different feet of course. Yes. You know how to study. First you should know which meter. Always remember there will be variations. A poem that is in dactylic hexameter will not have every single line in dactylic hexameter. Some lines will not be. There will be variations. Remember that. Okay. Spencerian stanza matlab kya hota hai? Take eight lines of iambic pentameter or Ottawa rima. Add one Alexandrine to it. That is Spencerian stanza. Eight lines of iambic pentameter. Plus one long Alexandrine. Clear? St. Agnes's, St. Agnes Eve, a bitter chill it was. The owl for all his feathers was a cold. The hare limb trembling through the frozen grass. And silent was the flock in woolly fold. Numb were the beadsman's fingers while he told. 
his rose seri and while his rose did breath like pa as in since from a sense a rolled seemed taking flight for heaven without a death i think there is a variation here and then one long line pass to the sweet virgin's picture while his breath he said i just cooked it up past the sweet virgin's picture while his prayer he said did you understand <laughs> at first i i also didn't understand at first it was completely confusing nothing i understood how to see sing how to read but lage rehna usme you keep on doing it keep on doing it then you will become wonderful at it did you understand Chaucerian stanza or rhyme royal means seven lines of iambic pentameter. अरे बहुत लोग छोड़ के गए session. शुरू में जब हम in the beginning when we were doing figures of speech more people were there and when I started singing people left I don't like it I want more people to listen to my singing. <laughs> because anyway i can't sing anywhere and make people listen so at least like this i can sing look at the shield of achilles will you please tell all your friends watch the end of this video because this lady is singing <laughs> a plain without a fee see there are variations it is iambic pentameter but variations will be there a plain without a feature bare and brown no blade of grass no sign of neighborhood nothing to eat and no where to sit down yet congregated on its blankness stood i am telling you guys if you read like this you will become experts If you are not experts in anything, it is only because you are not doing it. You can become experts in anything if only you keep on doing it. Did you understand, my sweethearts? Please listen to me. Read like this every day. Study everything. It's wonderful. This world is wonderful. This life is wonderful because there are so many wonderful things to do. if you do all these things and learn properly you will have no time for any jealousy or anger or sadness or depression whenever you feel down i don't want to live i have nothing in this life just take i am big pentameter and read it finished all problems end <laughs> blank verse i am big pentameter only but no rhyme it is iambic pentameter same thing but no rhyme and now with gleams of half extinguished thought with many recognitions it dim and faint and somewhat of a sad perplexity the my the picture of the mind revives again while here i stand not only with the sense of present pleasure but with pleasing thoughts that in this moment there is life and food for future years and so i dare to hope <laughs> i'm enjoying this it's lovely <laughs> singers will think oh my god this is sacrilegious she is such a bad singer who cares we are just enjoying ourselves and studying figures of speech speech and prosody is so boring never again think figures of speech and prosody is singing and dancing you should say <laughs> i hope this session will never end i'm loving it blank verse is no rhyme only meter and meter is iambic pentameter what is terza rima three three lines terza rima is three three lines of iambic pentameter
thou from whose unseen presence the leaves dead one one extra word is there are driven like ghosts from mm, i can't read it uh, intricate line, rhyme scheme if you do a little bit of searching you you will understand o wild west wind thou breath of autumn's being thou from whose unseen presence the leaves dead are driven like ghosts from an enchanter fleeing you know where the, wherever the stress falls the tala will come o o wild west wind thou breath of autumn's being thou breath of autumn's being you know like that ottavarima eight lines of iambic pentameter and o oh, if ever i should fuck uh, and o oh, if ever i i should forget i swear to be like that o oh, and o oh, if ever if, and o oh, if ever i should forget i swear but that's impossible and cannot be got it but that's impossible and cannot be so now shall this blue ocean melt to air so now shall earth resolve itself to see then i resign thy name majo my fair are you getting the trick sometimes we get confused nahi koi nahi go to next line that's all <clears throat> are you loving this did i make it thing make make things clear quatrain quatrain is four lines four lines the curve you tolls the knell of parting day the lowing herd wind slowly over the lay the plow man homeward plods his weary way and leaves the world to darkness on and to me you understood wherever the stress is the thala will come <laughs> i am sure there has never been such a lecture in an academy you youtube channel before <laughs> because an academy does not teach primary school children mujhe kya i will teach the way i want because my students will benefit from it you will all remember this session won't you ballad stanza all uh, all in a hot and copper sky the bloody sun at noon right up above the mast did stand no bigger than the moon no bigger than the moon <laughs> that is ballad stanza and the heroic couplet i am big pentameter lines rhyming in pairs two two lines be home as works your study and delight read them by day and meditate by night <laughs> did you understand be home as works your study and delight read them by day and meditate by night i am able to sing only because there is meter what do you mean by meter meter means stress comes at regular intervals stress comes at regular intervals <laughs> akanksha's parents are thinking akanksha is taking a singing class oh my god please wear earphones what will your parents think <laughs> god my dear friends did you realize that i have completed the presentation i have done it 
Behold, must works your study and delight. Do you understand how music composers compose music? They get where the stress falls, and like this, they do something. Read them by day and meditate by night. Then form your judgment, then your maxims bring. And trace the muses upward to their spring. Still with itself compare his text. Still with itself compare his text pursues. Once more. Still with itself compare his text pursues. And let your comment be. And let your comment be, and let your comment be the man to end moves. And let your comment be the man to end muse. And that is the end of today's session. Good night, good night. Thank you all. <laughs> I'm crazy. I hope an academy will not find me. Who asked you to sing in our channel? <laughs> wow. I loved it. I don't know whether you loved it or not. Anyway, I loved it. <laughs> material aware, available for life of Galileo. Are, padega, mere hath mein to nahi hai. Guys, thank you very much. I hope you liked it. I hope your approach to rhetoric and prosody has changed forever. Can I trust you? I want you to study rhetoric and prosody and become tremendously interesting knowledgeable, inspiring teachers. <laughs> I was not planning to do all this because of your support, because of your encouragement. Even if there are only 20 people listening to me, 20 people, those 20 people were amazing. Thank you. You made me do it. Love you all. All the best to you. Please put your heart and soul into everything you do. And wish you all the best. You will be amazingly awesome professors. Guys, tomorrow we will talk about genres. Will you come and attend? And tell your friends also, please. Ask your friends to watch at least the end part of this video, please. Okay. Bye-bye. Love you all. Have a blessed, beautiful, peaceful night. Bye. Love you all.